Hello and welcome to Community Chats. I'm Ali Hammer and today we're joined with Paul Thompson from Tyra Payments. Paul, welcome to the show. Can you start by telling our audience a little bit about Tyra Payments? Yeah, so Tyra Payments is, as it sounds, a payments company. Uh, we started out as offering acquiring only in 2003 and eventually grew to become to offer all full banking range of banking products uh, for businesses across Australia. So deposits, loans, and obviously acquiring along with health claiming and private claiming and rebates. And Paul Tap, which is Tara's app platform, built on AWS as a true rocket ship. And I've seen so many of our specialist solution architects being completely blown away with the technology. I know you're really humble, Paul, but can you tell us a little bit about the cloud journey with TAP? Sure. So TAP is Tyra application platform. Uh, it's our app platform for running containerized workloads on top of EKS with uh, Istio. Um, I guess it is took our learnings from on-premise and running microservices there, um, and then leveraging you know, the open source tools that exist today to, to make that whole thing a better experience. Um, and I guess the, the interesting bits of it is we sort of jumped on the, the GitOps bandwagon quite early uh, a couple of years ago and built that out by also building a couple of abstractions on top of Kubernetes and Istio to help make the experience better for our product engineers. Uh, so one of those things is called Schooner, which is a Kubernetes operator that abstracts away Kubernetes, uh, sorry, Kubernetes and Istio um, for a couple of reasons. So it gives a nicer interface for product engineers to, to deal with when running their workloads on top of TAP, um, be it via you know, sensible default configuration um, and just uh, nicer things to reckon with, not having to become experts in the underlying technology. But it also helps our platform team because they're no longer having to get uh, product engineers to upgrade things when we want to change like Istio versions. If Istio were to deprecate some APIs, now the Schooner interface that sits in the middle kind of acts as an adapter between the two and allows uh, the platform team to move freely, stay up, stay up to date and stay on top of what we've, uh, sorry, the latest versions of Kubernetes and Istio. And again, empowering the product engineering teams to kind of leverage those features. Um, as we've continued along the GitOps journey, we've also introduced Argo CD as a way to synchronize desired state with our clusters as per the GitOps sort of principle. Um, and again, we introduced another operator for that as well called Slipways, keeping with the nautical theme. Um, and it is basically, again, an abstraction over some of the Argo CD details. It just gives things a nice interface to just say, this is where my manifests live um, and not have to worry about, you know, all of the specifics of how to configure Argo and it will just deploy them to the appropriate clusters. There have been so many awesome learnings from the TAP technology. So thank you so much for sharing. And Paul, what are some of the initiatives that keep you and the engineering teams occupied? Because I know you guys are slammed at the moment. Sure. So I guess apart from ongoing maintenance of the TAP cluster um, and you know constantly upgrading Kubernetes and Istio, which are quite fast moving pieces, um, we are looking at a couple of things. One being our POS integration, which is something that was comes from the early days of Tyro and has it's one of Tyro's big selling points is, is the amount of pauses we integrate with. Uh, the technology that was built on has served us well for the last 10 plus years, but now we're looking at how we can basically reimagine it to scale for the next 10. Um, and one of the ways we're doing that is also is by looking at AWS IoT as a platform potentially for doing this. So I guess that combined with uh, device management, which uh, terminals and pauses wouldn't traditionally be things you would imagine as IoT type devices, but then when you look at the way we interact with them and what we have to do with them, it does quite fit that model nicely. So we were investigating the IoT platform, doing a bit of a proof of concept and spike on that at the moment. And some of the you know, monitoring device management um, and, and rules and things that are built into that service seem to be, a, be quite nice tools for the job we need to achieve with them. Those are some really cool projects keeping you guys busy. And I guess what I want to know is if we have to wrap up this interview, what would you like to have built over the next two, three years? Sure. So one of the major things we're looking at doing is revamping our whole CI/CD pipeline. Uh, it it was built at the beginning of our cloud journey uh, back in 2018. Um, but as time has gone on, there's there's been a lot of movement in the industry that we would like to you know, leverage some of the new tooling that's come out. Um, we want to re reimagine the whole thing as a sort of event driven uh, uh, process, um, leveraging a lot of AWS services. 
but also leverage a lot of the tooling and, and things that have come out now around um, supply chain security and, and provenance. So things like Project Six Store um, and tools like uh, the framework like Intoto and tools like Cosign to basically look at how we improve our security posture. So signing, signing artifacts all the way from source and, and attesting to them before they run in production. Um, and then along with that, I guess improving the developer experience to improve the sort of the dev feedback loop. So as um, you, know, you move to a more and more cloud-based world, things where you would used to do a lot of local testing on your machine have less validity because you now need to test against services and in a, you know inside of different environments, AK Kubernetes. So there's tools like Tilt and Scaffold, which aim to solve that problem by allowing you to quickly synchronize changes locally into a running cluster, test your changes fast without having to go through a whole CI/CD pipeline um, before you get to just validate the thing that you've written works. So we were looking to um, basically improve the dev experience and, and better speed up the dev feedback loop or tighten the dev feedback loop, um, basically to improve the developer experience and help them leverage the, the cluster better. Paul, thank you so much for coming on the show. I know so many companies out there will really learn a lot from Tyro and your journey with AWS. And if anyone does have any questions, please pop them in the comment section below and we'll get back to you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.